Media Minute, a special edition of the Social Media Minute. This hour brought to us by Vastros. Uh, speaking about Cripsy, probably Vastros is where he got his suit. Mr. Omar oh, Atli. <laughs> we got it. Um, introduce candidate number three on the uh, up party slate, Mr. Omar Atli. Omar Atli. Omar Atli. Yes, there you sir. go. Good three morning, times. Good morning, Sir Martin. Good morning, Lisa. 101. Got to say it three times. Yes, man. How's uh, how's everything with you? Great. Yeah. Great. Great. Um, it's a lot of work, mm -hmm. but I'm a customer of it. I have been um working relentlessly for the past month. Actually, a month and a half. Mm -hmm. Um, when we decided that we were going to make this journey, we started to meet with people, meet with family members and so forth. Um, so when postulation comes, we can just come up with a bang. Right. Yeah. Now, when did you actually say, you know what, I'm ready, I think I'm going to do this, I'm going to go into the uh, political arena? Um, it really struck me when the government, um, when the Prime Minister called election uh -huh. this time. I wasn't surprised, we were expecting it. Mm -hmm. but. I really said, you know what, um, I think now is the time to take this journey. Mm -hmm. And um, people around me was like, you got to do it, you got to do it. And as much as I tried to stray away from it, mm -hmm. it was just pulling me back, pulling me back. So mm -hmm. I think this is the path that God wants me to take. Okay. And um, yeah, you can't argue with God. Yeah, because uh, first you started off with your um, educational videos. Yes, correct. Yeah. Look, now, well, now from from then, is that when you said, you know what, I, I'm going to go into politics, or you just said, let me do the videos because... No, I, I'm going to be 100% honest mm -hmm. with everybody. What happened was, when election was called, a lot of people were upset. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are just, and still, I'm not voting, I don't want to hear from nobody. Mm -hmm. And I think that that was the wrong, we were going down the wrong path. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And what happens is... What I have realized, and I'm gonna I'm gonna say it straight, that the most of the politicians have not took the time to educate the people on the reason you mm -hmm. are doing things, the reason things are not happening. Um, so I said, you know, let me look into why maybe only seven rules were were placed by the government mm -hmm. and a foundation were placed so much more. Let me look into why this law was not passed, why this law was not amended, you know? And that's the important thing. I think that we play games with each other so much that super might make a, um, an adjustment to, let me say, taxes. Mm -hmm. Now, me being on the opposition, I know the reason that super is doing it is for a long-term benefit. Mm -hmm. But me being on the opposition, I won't tell the people. I would just, oh, you're raising it, you're raising taxes. Right to get the people behind me mm -hmm. for votes. Mm -hmm. But I think that everything has a reason and every action has a reaction. Mm -hmm. So let me see why Super is really doing this. Mm -hmm. And if it's something good, then I would educate the people on why it's good. If it's something bad and Super could have taken another direction, then I would educate the people that, hey, Super, you're wrong on this, mm -hmm. in this so, motive. So let's say, for example, if elected, if elected into parliament, if certain uh, laws are proposed, amended, or whatever or the case may be, would you then still continue to educate the people with your videos to say, hey, this is why this was passed, this is why this wasn't passed, etc. and things yeah, like that? that's the only way to do it. Because, look, we tend to forget a parliament parliament seat is not permanent mm -hmm. right it's supposed to be for four years but the way we going <laughs> but even if it goes for four years it's not permanent and mm -hmm. I think that we or they have tend to forgotten that mm -hmm. they think that okay I'm here I don't need you guys I don't need to explain you guys and only when now it hit the fan right and we need your vote again then everybody, I wanna, everybody have a voice and know what mm -hmm. to say and speak yeah. up and go on Facebook and rant and then I need to tell you why I did it or why not, mm -hmm. you know? No, I think that the people need to know now mm -hmm. is very important. And what I have done is, is taking, taking like the uh, complexity mm -hmm. of the laws and try to break it down so that every everybody body can understand, can understand mm -hmm. you know? So, mm -hmm. and that was the important mm -hmm. thing about it. But what, what, would you say that you could put some of the fault on the people as well? Because a lot of a lot of us don't like to read, research read. and read and you know and understand. We just like to watch Parliament because of the melee and mm -hmm. find out who got signed check well and 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 whatnot. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to important thing like the the C, uh, CFATF laws, mm -hmm. that's something very important and could be detrimental uh, to Saint Martin if not handled um, correctly. The airport situation, you know, the whole thing when it comes to um, central bank and taxes and all of that, yeah. you know. Yeah. Look, the thing about it is that um, 
I would say that we, we the people, have to assume some sort of responsibility. Yeah. But, like he said, the melee and stuff, we have, like the parliamentarians have turned it into that. Mm -hmm. Like, people, when you think of politics, the first thing they think of is like, why are you going to they're going to blast you or you, mm -hmm. you know your business like they, we have not turned it into something um prestige mm -hmm. something of an honor to be a a, a politician mm -hmm. to be a parliamentarian you know and i think that what i'm trying to do is take it away from all of the the bashing and all of the the, the negative, negative. Mm -hmm. and try to show people look this is how it's supposed to be done i don't have all the answers mm -hmm. I, I could never have all the answers right but i will show i will try my best to show people like hey this is a new approach, mm -hmm. you know, and I think that we are starting to see the face of politics changing. Mm -hmm. And and somebody like me, right, going into politics, raise a lot of eyebrows. Where mm -hmm. he going, you know? And that's why super. I decided like I know that question would have come. Where he going? Mm -hmm. But what I, I said, okay, while I have the floor for myself, let me show people my intellect. Let mm -hmm. me show people my knowledge. Let me show people that I can take a book and read. Mm -hmm. Let me show people that. You may judge me, but you don't know. Let, let, like a lot of people don't know my education level. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't know that I have a master's degree. They don't know that I was straight A student. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They, they, don't judge, know they judge the book by the cover. Yeah, they don't know of the work that I did in the community. In the book, let me give a prime example, right? <laughs> and this is so funny. We um, when we had the signing in for the up party, mm -hmm. so I went there and I went with um. It was a lot of us, you know, in, in number three shirts, mm -hmm. about 30, 40 of us, and we took a picture, and. One of the boys that was there from the block, he called me later in the night. He was like, hey, a politician came up there. Right? I don't want to call the name. <laughs> a politician came up there. He was like, I saw you guys on Facebook, and I hope you guys vote properly, vote for somebody that know what they're doing, or, you know, mm -hmm. or have experience. I would like to tell that politician. Oh, um, bring the ruckus. Bring it. Yeah. Okay. Bring it. I mean, I have experience in sitting in parliament but i have experience in helping the people mm. i have experience in helping those young men because when i was giving them jobs for the past four to five years where were you mm. you have some nerve right, to go and tell these guys that i have employed and helped and take off the same streets mm -hmm. to know what they are doing they know what they're doing that's why they're there in the picture because mm -hmm. i have been there for them from before I have decided to postulate myself. And that's the problem that we have. Mm -hmm. And I often say it's super. Mm -hmm. My priority is not St. Martin. My priority is the people of St. Martin. Mm -hmm. Growing up in the States, I guess I have learned the philosophy of they put a mask. You know, it's a mask where mm -hmm. they put something on the news right. to get your attention mm -hmm. while something else is going, going on. on the background. Right? And I would like to speak on this. This, this is very important. Um, um, I want to take it off of me for a minute. I know this is supposed to be the platform to, to advertise yourself and mm -hmm. so forth, but this right here is bigger than me. Mm -hmm. It's right. We had postulation day, and at the end, I went with my family. We sat for an hour or two, you know. Um, everybody had the, the speech to give me, and later I was like, okay, time to go back to work. Let's, mm -hmm. let's go. Mm -hmm. And um, a friend of mine called me, like, well, you're gone, you leave. No, the other another party is there and they um you know, they mm -hmm. by the bar and everybody there and you leave. Mm -hmm. So I said, um, that will not get me votes. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. There's real issues out there. And I got a call that night from somebody in the shelter mm -hmm. in Sucker Garden. This is a true story. And I went with my team and when I met the people at the shelter, I, I it broke me. I'm not gonna lie. What broke me was mainly the kids. Now, we have this situation, and I want Super and everybody and every political party that is not in power to put the pressure on those in power right now for mm -hmm. this. We have a crisis where 40 persons are going to be homeless. Mm -hmm. They receive the eviction notice, like la the week of postulation, mm -hmm. and they have to be out by November 30th. By November 30th. These people are going to be homeless. I saw two-year-old kids, three-year-old kids. Uh, um, five year old ranging to 18 mm -hmm. they are going to be out on the street this is a real real problem mm -hmm. the video had came out um, circulating where they were asking for assistance to fix the houses in Cold Bay mm -hmm. to put these people because mm -hmm. what happened is um, there were some houses in, in Cold Bay the people that were living there were relocated to Belvedere mm -hmm. for the meantime 
but some of the families are so big and according to the Dutch law you cannot have a boy and a girl sleeping in the same room so mm -hmm. some of them have to get three bedroom oh, okay. homes so what happened is they were asking for assistance to fix these homes in Colby some of the persons would move into this home mm -hmm. and then the people that were in Belvedere some of them would go back to Colby and you know we would mm -hmm. find they would find right. space in for these people now they did the video they raised the money the, the foundation raised the money to fix these houses in Cold Bay but apparently the video got the attention of the World Bank mm -hmm. so now the World Bank said wait 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 why these people need to raise money right. and five hundred and fifty thousand dollars was given to um, I guess the housing foundation oh. or so that's what yeah. it said so um, now with the whole back and forth the people was never able to get the houses in Cold Bay mm -hmm. And they don't have the houses in Belvedere neither. So now, the, and I and I don't. This is no attack on the owner of the building because he have, it's his it's his building. Mm -hmm. You understand? And if a contract is up, and then then yeah. he, you know. So right. I want to put that clear. I'm not backlashing the owner of the building, but the government now. Mm -hmm. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Because I'm hearing everybody talking about, like we said, and I spoke about it too, and I'm happy. Eh? I'm very happy that action is being taken on the airport. Mm -hmm. And I'm hearing other issues, you know? But I couldn't wait to get here today to talk about this because this is what I talk about when I say the real issues of Simati. Mm -hmm. We have families that on the 30th will be homeless. They have nowhere to go. Mm -hmm. What are we going to do? Mm -hmm. This is this is a real issue, you know? Um, and another thing about it is um, super, like I I don't know. I just don't know what to say. I just don't. I just don't know what to say right now. Yeah, it's it's, it's a terrible situation for a lot of people. You know, especially with the holidays coming up. It's it's yeah. not, It's not something nice. And 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 we're seeing a lot of these campaigns where there's a lot of smear campaigns and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And and bringing it yeah. back to the bashing and everything because when you announce that um, actually when you were doing the videos, everybody yeah. was on your side and yeah, yeah man, good job. Yeah, yeah. And then you announce your candidacy, then all of a sudden you turned into the bad guy. Yeah. Oh, but when he was younger, he used to do this, yeah, and you yeah. know everybody started digging up your past, talking about Correct. your family and whatnot. Um, how are you going to move forward, uh, even though people are bringing up the, the, this stuff? The past is exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. The past. I, I'm not even paying it no mind because you know what's more important than my past? Yeah. The families that I'm talking about right now. They mm -hmm. called me. They like that. The same day that that was going on, I received a call from the shelter. Mm -hmm. These people believe in me. I have become the voice of the people. You understand? So those things don't matter to me that comes with the territory so be it but right now what what counts is this what are we going to do for this family mm -hmm. because the hurtful thing is that they have told me that politicians already came there to campaign so I said okay wait let me wait and see who's gonna talk about the issue because I wasn't the f I didn't even go there mm -hmm. they called me mm -hmm. I didn't go there to campaign I didn't go there to ask to vote for me mm -hmm. but why is nobody talking about this Hmm. But you can go there to ask them for a vote. Hmm. So you, you know what I mean? And nothing against you, Super, but for anybody, you think I have the time to worry about negativity? Mm -hmm. True. When people out here leaning on me? I have no time for that. Yeah. No time for that. Because my positive actions will speak for itself. Now let's let's speak about lean. What about um, your uncle Frankie Myers, mm -hmm. uh, who's not running this year? Actually, he was supposed to come up with his own party, but he decided to you know pull just it a, back. Just a question: What do I have to do with the next? Just, just a question. Is it about lean and then? No, because now because people are saying you know you know that his uncle is not running. So the people so can lean on him. He's, no, oh. no, he's leaning. People are saying you know he's leaning on his uncle. His uncle is oh, using like, him. Oh, okay, okay, cool. Uh, okay. In, in, in place of him. Okay. What, what, what do you have to say about that too? Look, my uncle is not using me in place of no one. Mm -hmm. When my uncle had his party, when he was coming out, I was still going to run. I was still going to run with his party. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you were going to run with him yeah. regardless? Yeah, regardless. Okay. Regardless, because I just think like, and, and look, and even, right, I, su I have supported my uncle for mm -hmm. all my life. I, I have voted for only one person. And now, if it's if it's my turn, yeah. then I should I should you know it's nothing wrong with my uncle voting for me or mm -hmm. wearing my shirt. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But like I said, this time around, Omar Atli was going. I was going to run. 
you know, and we, he respected it and he understood it. Mm -hmm. That, okay, this this might be your call and he had his, and for the reasons of him not running again, mm -hmm. he said he's going to sit it out un until the next election or whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. But I don't plan to do this and stop mm -hmm. right now. So eventually, for those people that are saying that, like, I, I don't even, like, entertain that as well. Mm -hmm. Because I want you to start to listen to my message rather than thinking, he is putting this, this is Frankie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm, uh, uh, you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is and, and what, what I'm trying to show people with the videos in the educational session is that we need to start to get away from things that don't matter mm -hmm. and focus on things that do matter. Mm -hmm. Now, now, some of the issues that you've been talking about, have you ever went to your uncle about these issues while he was um, in Parliament? No, I'm going to be honest, like, there would be some situations where um, if, like, I never met, like, 40 people that are being evicted, mm -hmm, Right. you know? So it may be like one person is having an issue mm -hmm. or whatever it may be, and then I'll bring it to him, and he would... Um, handle it in the correct manner mm -hmm. like if it's okay yes he'll be like bye based on this contract so I can't, and so I can't, that yeah. I can't do nothing mm -hmm. based on what this person signed I can mm -hmm. you understand so certain things that he would bring up and, and um, other politicians too they would bring it up on the floor of parliament but I realized that the um, the like the major major issues the social issues mm -hmm. are being masked mm -hmm. like look Prime example, when I decided to run, I was like, I have my master's degree in uh, business administration with a minor in engineering. I have mm -hmm. my bachelor's degree in civil engineering mm -hmm. and I do construction work, mm -hmm. all right? So what I wanted to do, of course, is lobby on a, a lot of these topics like the roads and new, mm -hmm. new infrastructure and stuff that we can bring to St. Martin. But in doing research, what grabbed my heart was social issues. Mm -hmm. I have a, um, one of my team members here now and he's on my team by coming to the meetings. Mm -hmm. He asked me one question, he said, but why do we have so much slums in Samadhi? He said, you know how we get slums? I said, yeah, he said, because of the minimum wage, because of how people are living, because of the poverty, mm -hmm. right? And I explained to him, exactly, but social issues are being neglected because the same people that are in charge of wanting to build a hundred million dollar hospital are in charge of social welfare and benefits. Yeah. And if we can't get the hospital by three years now, let's inject some money in our people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody's talking now, and, and, and I understand, I met Mr. Yusuron from the Poverty Platform the other day, and at first meeting him, he was a little standoffish because, you know, he's like, oh, it's election, everybody is coming. And when we sat down and we spoke, and he realized the knowledge that I have, I, I have um, mm -hmm. sp sp speaking about, mm -hmm. and I have studied his, his findings, he was more at ease. We had a great conversation, right? And I read this in a book. People that are in a poverty-stricken environment never realize they're in poverty because everybody around them the is in thing. poverty. Is it, yeah. mm. You only realize it when you come out, out, out of it. Of it yeah. You understand? Mm. So those people that are in Dutch Quarter, in, in Colby, in KB, and those type of stuff, when I, when I put out, the f not my findings, the findings from the poverty platform, which they have been preaching forever, mm -hmm. when I put it out, everybody was shocked. But how 94% live in poverty? But we don't realize it because everyone around us is in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It seems like a norm. Mm -hmm. Seems normal. Yeah, you're getting by, everybody's comfortable. Yeah. So, I, I, you know, I, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. But, but based, the based on the report, how much it said that the average St. Martiner needs a month to, to, to basically uh, survive? 4,000 gillers. gillers. Re recent report had moved to 5,000 gillers. Wow. But 4,000 gillers, mm -hmm. and in 2010, 75% was under this mark. 2015, 94% wow. was under this mark. And that's the highest in the Dutch Kingdom. Yeah. Right? That's crazy. I should man. think so because after Hurricane Irma, mm -hmm. it's going to be worse. Mm hmm. You understand? And the World Bank data assessment, the households in St. Martin make under eight fifty. Mm -hmm. So what 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 are the, what are what are some of the ideas that you have to help, you know, curtail some of these issues that uh, that we're facing right now, especially when it comes to the poverty. I know you you've been talking about yeah. that a lot in your platform. Uh, also the youth as well. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. One one of the things that we want to do is um if we can, we wanna raise the pension to match the minimum wage. We also want to raise the minimum wage, mm -hmm. okay? So that's but I. Oh, I mean, raise the pension to, wage, not, yeah. not the age. No, no, the okay. wage. The wage to the match. Okay. The minimum wage. Uh -huh. Because I think that if you 
say that okay this is what the minimum somebody should be paid then a person goes on pension I think that it should be equal mm -hmm. that's number one but the pe pe pension is based on what basically okay how you get pension is mm -hmm. based on on the amount of years that you are registered on the island okay right and then what they do like say somebody super you mm -hmm. they, they start you get 45 years for your maximum pension right mm -hmm. okay so they start from 15 when you're if you're registered and uh -huh. known to the tax office you go for we go, we're going to use 60 for mm -hmm. easy purposes uh -huh. we go to 60 so that 45 years then they're going to take 45 multiply it by two percent because mm -hmm. two percent is what the dot says is our percentage in the pension fund pot. okay mm -hmm. so two percent so you're going to get 90. Mm -hmm. then you're going to take that 90 and multiply it by right now the maximum pension is 1115 mm -hmm. gillers mm -hmm. so then that's what you're going to receive okay so if somebody is here for 25 years who may come from st kitts dominica or wherever then you're going to take the 25 times it to two mm -hmm. they're going to get 50 percent then they're going to get 50 percent right. of that okay. amount okay, okay. Yeah. all right you understand mm -hmm. so I, that's another thing people think like pension is based on what you're paying no mm -hmm. right it's based on you being registered on the island mm -hmm. that's number one and then also you being known to the tax office yeah but again you oft we often receive um percentage of mm -hmm. pension so i think that we could raise it and another thing that um what I want to lobby for is actually trying to at least then make it tax free, the okay. pension. Right. You know, I I think that that's a good um a good move. Mm -hmm. Come on, lad. Some of some the average pension based mm -hmm. on research, the average pensioner receives five hundred and fifty gillers a month. That's after taxes and everything. Oh, that's uh, that before. That's before taxes. Wow. Five hundred and fifty gillers a month. No, come on. You know what I'm wow, saying? Wow. So and, those are things, and rent rent average is about almost eight hundred dollars a month. Yeah, yeah. So those are things that we need to lobby, and that's when I when I keep stressing on it. The Saint Martin people, mm -hmm. I don't want. I, I love um, Saint Martin with all my heart, but I think that we are making a mask. We want to make the the biggest harbor, the beautiful buildings in Front Street, the beautiful airport, and then when you drive right to Back Street, it's like wait, what's going on? Mm -hmm. And then you drive a little further down to the Squatter, it's like wait, what's going on? You know, in America right they made projects right mm -hmm. to move black people and put them in one area because mm -hmm. they wanted to develop maybe like i live in atlanta well i used to live in atlanta mm -hmm. you drive in downtown it's beautiful and you make a left and a right and then you're in the worst right, ghetto yeah. right mm -hmm. there yeah it's so like what they, just one yeah. street across yeah so what they did they want to move the people so we put them in a project mm -hmm. and when you move in the project of course the apartment building is new it's nice yeah but then we don't maintain it and when we don't maintain it the people become a subject of the environment mm -hmm. you understand if you put if you take a seed and you put the seed right here on this table and you come back 25 years later it's still gonna be a seed mm -hmm. but if i put the seed in the ground what's gonna happen yeah, it's right. gonna grow we are products of our environment mm -hmm. and that's what's happening in dutch quarter if we go right there right now with the housing that's what's happening in belvedere that's what's happening in the majority of neighborhoods in St. Martin. Then we want to know why a kid going to school and fighting and reacting the way he's doing mm -hmm. and, and being bullied or bullying people. We, man, look. Because it ourselves. Man, look. Mm -hmm. Some of these kids have to try to raise themselves. Yeah. Yeah. And what, what are some of the issues that you've been um, looking at when it comes so to the kids it, as well? Look, we need, to, we need to start to put, realize that the kids are the investment of St. Martin, they are the investment of our future, mm -hmm. right? Like, another thing we need to do is invest more in sports. Mm -hmm. Like, we did a research, right? And the Major League, MLB Major League, has the most players from Central America and the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. The most are from Central America and the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. So what happened to St. Martin? Mm -hmm. What happened to us? We have Aruba players. We have Curso, Curso, Curso players. Mm -hmm. What happened to St. Martin? Why we can't instill this in people? You, I often say, you know how much LeBron James we have here? You know how much Floyd Mayweather's we have boxers here, Shamar Birch and this boy go fight, represent St. Martin, come back, and he's not even talked about or look at. We have a world champion here, Omar Marsh, I'm a kickboxing world champion. Mm -hmm. Not even looked at, but other places he's a superstar. Mm -hmm. Because we have this, thing, this, this habit of when somebody is growing, we don't want to support them. Until they actually make it, then all of a sudden... You understand? Yeah. But That's my we, God, brother! Yeah. Yeah. We need to develop that love for our people in the government. We need to start focusing on sports, focusing on like school organizational sports. Mm -hmm. 
Let we have a competition, Milton Peters in Academy. That you know, let me start to bring scouts to the island. Let's do things again then. Mm -hmm. Cause back in the day they it was to. happening. Yeah, yeah. You know, let's do it again. Let, let, let's give the people an interest or a reason to do something. Like when I was going to school, if you want to be on a basketball team, you need to maintain a certain grade point average. Mm -hmm. So guess what? You want to play sports, you're gonna have to study and keep that average as you're on the bench. You link the two. Education, progress, and youth. You link the two. You know, as well as for the girls, we need more um, stuff for, the, for our, our little girls. We, mm -hmm. we can't just build a basketball court. One of the things I was talking about is like a YMCA, mm -hmm. where you walk in, we can do a basketball court, netball court, choreography room, dance room, library, play mm -hmm. room for kids that are less fortunate, for mm -hmm. the community. Let's build a real community center, not just an empty space. They call it a community center. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They tell her, I seen the poorest area. We used to go play basketball. And when you walk in there, they would have little kids who can't afford the toys and they would play in the corner with the toys until mm -hmm. 8 o'clock. The parents would take them home. They would yeah. have a study room. And all of these things that we need to start to grab the good from the outside world and bring it to St. Martin because look, what we have to offer? Tourism. Which, which, which Nevis look like they're doing it better than us right now. Mm -hmm. Which Anguilla look like they're doing it better than us. Sinkis look like they're doing it better than us. Totola. Huh? You know what Nevis did? Build 250 homes for the returning students. Mm -hmm. So that you in, so you can promote people to return mm -hmm. and use their knowledge in the island. Another thing that Nevis is doing, the you know the vendors, the people that are on the on the beach and yeah, so forth. Yeah. We have an issue with that, yes. And they start to give fines and so in St. Martin because they're saying they're harassing the tourists or whatever it may be. You know what they're doing? These people, they have taken the people and starting to give them classes. Mm -hmm. Massage, hospitality class, conflict class, resolution class. They have started to, to increase their value of their tourism. Right. So now when you walk on the beach, these people can say, come and they massage you and they... So, so what we can do is, a lot of locals, right, that are d doing these jobs, working for people of, of different ethnicity, let's take them, right, and let's develop them. them, let's take them, put them in the classes, you know, because look, nothing inflates tourism like hospitality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The immigration officers, the taxi drivers, they even took the taxi drivers and gave them a refreshment course. Mm -hmm. 194 uh, went and 194 passed. Because mm. everything is developing. Mm -hmm. So we need to develop with it. There are taxi drivers that, that are there. Some of them, look, some of them complain to me and say, like, maybe they might have a taxi driver. And that's okay. You want to make a living. But like, he can't speak English. Uh -huh. How can you relate with the people? You can't speak the English. So we need to start to refresh these people, um, um, elevate the level of tourism, take some of these vendors that we may have, put le um, local persons, let's make them learn to massage, learn to deal yeah. with people, learn to, to sell our island. And then tourists will start to come back. They will mm. feel good. Because pretty much when you look at all the islands, all of them have the same thing to offer. Mm. You know? But the only different thing is, like you said, how, how they, they, they feel when they get here, how they're reacted with yeah. and, and, and whatnot. And if they had a bad experience in St. Martin, but they had a great experience in St. Kitts, even though we have the same things to offer, basically, they're going to quicker go yeah, quicker uh, to St. Yeah. Kitts. And then, of course, we've been saying this a lot, uh, you know, here in St. Martin, our government is reactive instead of proactive. Yes. We wait until things hit rock bottom and then, mm -hmm. oh, let's do this, let's, let's, do, this, do, that. let's do that. It's too late. Mm -hmm. because because we have to work twice as hard now to get back to the level that we've had for such a long time. Because what happens, to, but, like, I might have a great, great idea. But because I'm not in power, I don't want to tell you my idea for you to do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? Like, for people who don't understand what we're talking about, let's, let's just do one example. You walk through Front Street, I mean the beach, Great mm -hmm. Bay Beach, and somebody, hey, you want to be out? Come, come, come buy this. Come go into this store. This is mm -hmm. how they're reacting to you. Come, mm -hmm. come, come, come. No, I'm okay. Come, come, come. Now you're walking in Nevis, and the person say, good day, would you like a massage? Good day, what are you looking for? You see the same yeah. You see the same way we're doing it? Yeah. What are you looking for? How may I assist you? Look you look thirsty, maybe. You look thirsty, right. yeah. This would be a good place for you. So what you're doing, you're teaching the people the same scenario, mm -hmm. but different approach. Right. Mm -hmm. And approach is everything. Mm. Everything. Now is that, that is that something that you've been using for your campaign, the whole approach? Because like you said, mm -hmm. people look at you, they judge you based yeah. on your cover. Everybody sees you with the hat, you know, yes. the, 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 the big shirt, the jeans and everything. Yeah. They know him from TG Band and, and everything. So um, are you is that something that you're working on as well? 
Well, not working on it. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm using. That's what you are. Okay. Because <laughs> it's me. Mm -hmm. It's me. Look, I'm, I'm here, right? You can't see Roman. The Roman's in his t-shirt. His his the red. You here? You normal with your mm -hmm. big shirt? It's me. But I want you to vote for me. I want Roma to vote for me. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah. So I got to represent you guys the best way that I can. Mm -hmm. And the best way that I can do it is my, with my intellect. Now if I go and talk on the mic and be like, yeah, bye. All right, vote for me. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> then I don't represent my right. people to uh -huh. the best of my ability. But I'm trying to prove a point mm -hmm. and let them know that, hey, this can and, I, and God's willing, I will be victorious. Mm -hmm. And the face of politics will change. Mm. We will start to respect people for who, the older people, the mm -hmm. taxi drivers, the people that stop me in the road, want these shirts, want this, want that. Of course, you know, life is life, it's mm -hmm. politics, but still, we have started to gain the respect of the others yeah. and the elderly. Because why? You're talking the truth. You're yeah. talking the facts. We have Mr. Omar Otley, number three on the up party slate. Mm -hmm. uh, we just have a couple of more minutes left. So before you leave, uh, of course, you know, when it comes to Samaritan politics, they say depending on where you are on the list, it's, it's, a, it's, a, big, it's a big thing. It's a big deal. Mm -hmm. And um, seeing that this is your first time, you know, coming into the arena, yeah. uh, you being so high on the list, number, number three, yeah. how, how did that happen? How did that whole uh, conversation go? Um, the work. Mm -hmm. Like I tell you, I have... I have been because you've been placed al above a lot of people who've been there yeah. already for years. Yeah, but, but no, <laughs> I don't do. I don't you know, <laughs> you're above the 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 the, the person who founded the party, their, their wife, their own yeah. wife. Yeah, but if you listen to her interview, yes, yeah, she did what, say what, why they have a special, they have a special uh, reason for why she wanted number yeah, four. Number four yeah. um, my thing is that um, that's why I like the party. Mm -hmm. Uh, not once have they have tell me listen um, we are doing your approach you have to dress this way you have to you know and, and speaking with Rolando Bryson or even Theo Hilliger they understand and understood what I am doing you know and they commend me every day for the hard work they never try to change who I am because that won't happen either mm -hmm. you know but they respect it and I respect them and so far like we had team building yesterday and the older vets, you know, um, were, were are receptive towards me. I I I don't know if it's, if it's, uh, if it's for, something, just for now, but now. they are receptive, and I haven't heard any issues of me being number three. Mm -hmm. And I think being number three that I am representing very well. Mm -hmm. I think being number three that uh, they can see that I am putting in my work above and beyond, mm -hmm. and I understand that being number three is not just to be on top but you assume some of the responsibility of the party mm -hmm. so you want to be um up top you're gonna have to work eh? Mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah where, where somebody's slacking off you're gonna have to pull them up and say hey hey hey, come let's go yeah. because now i am i have become uh one of the faces mm -hmm. of now, your party now i know you did mention it before you know you're not into the whole bashing and yeah and you know then pulling down and, and smear campaigns or whatever but it is a reality mm -hmm. and it's happening here now of course you know people might look uh, at, mm -hmm. at ups list and say, oh, but that one is this one, and this one is convicted, and that one do yeah. this one, that one, and that one. How is the party dealing with that situation? The party, the same philosophy as me. Just work for the people. Mm -hmm. Work for the people, that, that's it. Let go and let God. Mm -hmm. The day after my, my incident, the next day I was in the paper shaking hands with the Prime Minister delivering the school for vacation. Mm -hmm. per, I had, had no idea whether I was in politics or not, that was coming out. And my advice to anybody, not only on my party, let go and let God, let the work do the talking for you. Mm -hmm. That's it. If you sit down and worry with people and worry with what they have to say, we won't go forward. Because what you're doing, you're looking back. Mm -hmm. You just got to run forward. Okay. And right. that's what, that will do the talking, you know? So that, that's it. Yeah. Now, one of the most question, now mo most important question that everybody has been waiting on for me to ask you. When the new sound drop in? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what got happen with TG Man? <laughs> <laughs> no man. They no. care about the platform and the poverty line <laughs> and the thing and thing. What got happen to pick up the puppy and bring in the ruckus and mm -hmm. TG Band and all of that? Well, carnival is a part of our culture. Mm -hmm. That's one thing that we need to understand. So him as an MP will always dedicate himself to the culture and give back to the people music. Let's get answer now. Well, I ain't got no well, there, there, you go. There, there you go. There you go. There you go. There you go. But um, yeah. on a real though, Super, and um, if you can do this for me and Rama, um, I really want you guys to 
push on the little topic about the people because if if you really see the kids, mm -hmm. I I don't know what's gonna happen. I know that you know I'm here now. The vote is being reached, but you guys will be on the radio tomorrow and day yeah. after and day after. Yeah, for sure. But the families are being kicked out yeah. on the 38th. We, we spoke about the situation at Prince William Alexander School last week. We visited them. Okay. You know, a lot of bright you know students that they 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 just want the chance. They want to learn like everybody else. Okay. But mm -hmm. all of the classes. None of the fans are working. None, None of the ACs are working. working. Oh, one of the most important things. Look, I'm glad that you said mm. it. We need to do mandatory checks in all our schools. Yeah. Listen to this. GB was just demolished. Mm -hmm. GB has found to have asbestos. Asbestos, yeah. They had it all the time. Mm -hmm. but so if they didn't have Hurricane Irma, mm -hmm. how much people in GB were getting sick, how much people in GB lungs would have collapsed, how much yeah. people in GB would have died, because look mm -hmm. how serious it is to the point that we have, to put, we have to put out a press release and take precautions and bring up a special team from Holland to, uh, to yeah. remove it. Mm -hmm. That's how serious it was. So those people that were in GB, but it's surprising so, because that building was remodeled and, and fixed up before the hurricane well, and it's still, it's but still no, used. But what this brings me to, Super, mm -hmm. how do we know asbestos is not in our schools? Well, they found it at one of the schools. Remember the school oh. in St. Peter's? Um, you see? The one behind Sister Magda. Which school was that? That's was it that Prince? That's that was also Prince, Prince William Alexander. You see? Mm -hmm. you see? Yeah. So when our kids are coming home sick with asthma attacks in the hospital of yeah. food, it's, but we, listen, you have to check a lot we, of these schools. We have to get back on track mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because if Hurricane already didn't come, you GB would have still been standing, people mm -hmm. would have still been working in those same sick. rooms with yeah. the asbestos. Mm -hmm. And we need to protect our children. So, I don't know if you're doing it, if you did it, or going to do it, but you need to do it. Go check all the schools, whoever mm -hmm. listening. Let's get these people some houses, some, some government houses. Let's put them so the people and the kids don't be homeless. That's mm -hmm. our constitutional right. Mm -hmm. We have to protect the children. That's number one, those that are in government. Number two, let's check the schools and places to make sure that our kids are in a safe environment Asbestos free. <laughs> All right, there you go. Omar Atli, candidate number three on the Up Party slate, January 9th, 2020. Yes, what message do you have for the people of St. Martin? Well, everybody that is listening, to those that are on my live, to those that are listening um, on the radio, um, first of all, Wednesday, we have a Gear Up Happy Hour. Um, from five to to nine, where we're gonna be giving away the shirts and the and the merchandise. Um, we're gonna have DJs, food, drink specials. Um, come out, come enjoy yourself. Let's talk. Let's have some fun. It's gonna be in Sucker Garden, mm -hmm. aka Stephen Bar, the mm -hmm. new bar, Island Rock Bar. You just drive up Sucker Garden Road. You're gonna see the commotion. You're gonna see the people. Okay. Uh, the first public meeting is actually. Friday the 29th in Sucker Garden. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm doing a gear up in every neighborhood where the meeting will be. Oh, okay. So my first gear up will be Wednesday by Island Rock Bar, aka Steven Bar. Mm -hmm. You come there five o'clock, have your happy hour. You know, drink specials, food on sale, and let's enjoy ourselves. Let's talk and let's listen to some music. For the people that are going out January 9th, um, I want you to remember one thing: only we can save we. Nobody else. Let's have faith in ourselves. Let's have faith in the people. Listen to everyone's message. Listen carefully. Mm -hmm. Don't just vote for voting. Listen to the message. Absorb the message and vote your conscience. On January 9th, I will be your number three, your number three, your number three candidate on the UP slate, Omar E. C. Otley. Thank there you. you. There you have it. Ladies, I want to see you with the attitude. Super duper morning show.